Welcome to today's edition of Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock with all of today's news as we'll be discussing the UFC's debut in the Philippines, the latest regarding Nick Diaz, and the planned date for the next UFC light heavyweight title bout. UFC President Dana White appeared on the Jim Rome Show on Wednesday and indicated that John Jones and Anthony Johnson are being targeted for the month of May for their championship bout. The UFC is planning to hold their annual Memorial Day weekend card on May the 23rd in Las Vegas, and that would appear to be the date the fight would land on. Nick Diaz and his whereabouts were the subject of the first episode of UFC Embedded this past week, with the UFC informing the members of the media that Diaz had missed two flights out of Sacramento to Las Vegas and missed the open workouts on Wednesday afternoon. Diaz was shown arriving at the airport in Las Vegas on Wednesday and is now in the city for fight week. MMA junkies John Morgan has reported that featherweight Tiago Tavares is off the fight night card on February the 14th in Broomfield, Colorado, where he was set to fight Nick Lentz. The UFC is seeking out a replacement for Tavares on two weeks' notice. And Combat Press reported the news that the UFC will run their first card in the Philippines on Saturday, May the 16th from the SM Mall of Asia Arena in Manila. Because of the time difference, the Fight Night card would air on Friday evening in North America. The UFC made the official announcement of the card on Wednesday, but no fights have been announced as of yet. And we look ahead to all of the action this Saturday night, beginning on Fight Pass at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with three fights coming your way. And then we send you off to TSN at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, where you will be seeing Misha Tate take on Sarah McMahon among the prelim fights. And then the pay-per-view kicks off at 10 Eastern, headlined by Anderson Silva and Nick Diaz. UFC 183 is coming up this weekend, and it looks like the rest of the pay-per-view calendar, at least for the first seven months of the year, starting to fill out. We're starting here: John Jones, Anthony Johnson for May, Cain Velasquez, Fabricio Verdun for June, and then Conor McGregor, Jose Aldo for July. So how many of those six will get injured between now and the time those fights are supposed to take place, John? Well, I would say probably if you're, gonna, if you're a betting man, you Cain, never you Cain never Velasquez, rumor fights this late yeah, and, know, and, and not expect something I know, to but happen. you know, just I, I think for the... For the hardcore fans and even the casual fans, just the idea that Fabrizio Verdum and Cain Velasquez is getting close, Connor and Jose Aldo, and now after seeing what Anthony Johnson did to Alexander Gustafsson, again, we got to see John Jones versus Rumble. I mean, who in the world? Yeah. Uh, you know, just the anticipation, the build up for that. Uh, everybody says that Anthony Johnson is the guy to stop John Jones. Is that real? I don't know. Probably yeah, not. I don't know. It's certainly possible. I mean, he does so many things so well. We all have this tunnel vision that oh, he's got power, man. He's got, yeah. And if all he had was power, he'd have never got this far. He's got a lot of very, very applicable skills to trying to beat John Jones. I can't wait to see it. But remember there was a period where, you know, people, there was a shortage of marquee fights. There was a shortage of relevant fights, a shortage of title fights and stuff. All of a sudden, it's just laying out so nice right now. And I mean, they're all different. So these we're talking about guys fighting for the belt, the title, the thing that matters to all of these guys. What about this weekend? We got guys just fighting because it's cool. You know, yeah. and Nick Diaz just likes fighting guys. He likes big fights. He likes putting on fights. He likes getting into tough fights. He likes getting in there and smashing people up and taking what he's got to take. And he's got Anderson Silva. I mean, that's cool. We got cool stuff going on. And not only that, I mean, this is really what the sport was, was built on. It wasn't about titles. You know, the goal when, you know, George St. Pierre first got into the UFC, I'm sure is, you know, he wants to be the best in the world, so the guy who holds the title is the best in the world, but it's the idea of competing against top-notch guys, and that's what Nick Diaz is looking for, big mm -hmm. fights against the biggest names, and same with Dan Henderson, you know, people are saying, oh, that's it for Dan Henderson, you know, Gegard Mousasi, no, Dan, just give Dan Henderson big fights that are competitive for him, we all know how talented Gegard Mousasi is, this guy not even 30 years of age has been in this game for such a long time, a real martial artist, a real mixed martial artist, and that's what's going to happen when a guy in his prime faces off with a guy that has so many miles. What aspects to Nick Diaz ga Nick Diaz's game plan does he have to alter in order to be not only competitive with Anderson Silva, but win? He's a sizable underdog going into this fight. Is there a path to victory for Nick Diaz that is realistic on Saturday? The thing about Nick Diaz is he doesn't give a rat's ass what the appropriate game plan is. We well, were what talking, we think. Well, we think. Yeah, who the hell are we? But we were talking about this uh, in the green room. We have a green room. It's not actually green. but And uh, remember when he fought uh, Cyborg? Yeah. It's like there's a lot of way. At, Cyborg at that time was uh, an intimidating terror. We're talking about the male Cyborg, by the way. And he's an intimidating terror. And the way to handle him is just, you know, don't bring the fight to Cyborg. 
What did the guy do? He brought the fight to Cyborg. You know, there's the, he has a history of fighting. Paul Daly, the same Paul thing. Paul Daly. What do you do? Don't stand with Paul Daly. Paul Daly does not have the ground defense to stop your black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to scrap yeah. it out. And of one of the best rounds you're ever going to see. And Diaz won. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? So he doesn't care. Logically speaking, let's try to see and put Anderson Silva on his back. Uh, Diaz has been like training at elite levels of jiu-jitsu all his life, and we haven't even seen it much for years. But Diaz likes to fight, and he feels good in the pocket. He feels good standing in the pocket. Most people say don't do that with Anderson Silva, but he's 40. We don't know how his chin is. We don't know how his confidence is. We don't know how, to, how his leg is. So that's a gamble I think Nick Diaz is going to play. I, I think that it's, it's at least a fight that if – Maybe two years ago, you look at this as just how can Nick Diaz be that competitive? I think there's just there's way too many unknowns yeah. between with both guys. I mean, we forget that it's been this long since Nick Diaz has fought, going on two years. With Anderson Silva, I don't think you can honestly sit down and map out how Anderson Silva is going to perform and be able to bank on it. I think we won't know that until that mm -hmm. that fight starts. What what is that confidence level at? How? confident is he in his leg kicks? I think there's tons of questions yeah. and that makes it as intriguing to me as who's across the cage from him. Robert and I, you, we were talking about uh, this fight, the main event coming up this weekend, and we anticipate that Anderson Silva, he's been working these leg kicks in, his, in the training room, working because everybody says, oh, will Anderson Silva be throwing those? And we expect him to throw them yeah. pretty early. He might not throw a hundred of them, but if the, if the first three, probably you throw in the first couple minutes, just to Send a message. Take, yeah, take that question off there, even if you're not planning on throwing a lot of them. But uh, uh, the word is Nick Diaz is in crazy shape even compared to Nick Diaz right now. The word is the guy is in unbelievable shape. That's a factor against a 45-year-old. Nobody takes Nick Diaz out, so rounds four and five. If he feels he can win those, he just needs one of the first three. Interesting fight coming up. It's the main event of awesome. UFC 183 for Robin Black, John Ramdean. I'm John Pollock, and more Fight News Now Extra is coming up.